Hi everyone, and welcome to the series Learn GDScript the Hard Way, a very simple introduction to the amazing world of game development. This course is inspired by the book of the same name, Learn Python 3 the Hard Way, by Z. A. Shaw. Since GDScript is very similar to Python, I felt that it would be a good fit to teach it in the same way. If you have zero or little coding background, then this course is for you as it will take you through everything that you need to know and help you to understand it well because you will be doing it the hard way by actually trying out everything that you see. With that being said, please consider subscribing. When you first open Godot, you are presented with the project manager. From here you can import projects, open existing ones or start a new project. We will start a new project. Click on new project. The only requirement is that the folder needs to be empty. So go ahead and find the folder for your projects and create a new folder. Let's call it Hardway 1. When you first open Godot, you are presented with the editor window. This is where you'll spend most of your time when building projects in Godot. The editor interface is divided into several sections, each offering different functionality. The specific terminology for each section is described as follows. The main portion of the editor window is the viewport. This is where you'll see parts of your game as you're working on them. In the upper left corner is the main menus, where you can save and load files, edit project settings and get help. In the center at the top, is a list of the workspaces you can switch between when working on different parts of your game. You can switch between 2D and 3D mode, as well as script mode, where you can edit your game's code. The asset library is the place where you can download add-ons and example projects. The icons in the toolbar will change based on what kind of object you are editing. So will the items in the bottom panel, which will open various smaller windows for accessing specific information such as debugging, audio settings, and more. The buttons in the upper right playtest area are for launching the game and interacting with it when it's running. Finally, on the left and right sides are the docks. You can use these to view, select game items, and set their properties. The left-hand dock contains the file system tab. The scene tab shows the current scene you are working on in the viewport. In the inspector tab, below it, see and adjust the properties of any object you select. When making anything in Godot, we have to begin with a node. Think of it as a container for what we are creating. Select 2D scene which will create a node 2D for us. Now click on the image of the little icon of the scroll to attach a script to this node. Under template, Select Empty so that we can work with a blank script. Click on Create. We'll start by printing text output to the console. When our program is launched, the first thing that runs is a function called Ready. We'll put our print statements in this function. Notice that function names can start with an underscore, but never with a digit, and they can never have spaces. Function names always have round brackets after them. This is where the parameters go, which are optional additional pieces of information which a function might need or use. Also, to indicate to the compiler that this is the start of a block or section of code, we use a colon. Now, like Python, GDScript is an indented language, which means that it uses indentation rather than symbols like braces or squiggly brackets to show which code belongs to a certain section. Type in the commands print hello world and print this is my first script.
Print is a function which is built into Godot. Its purpose is to print text output to the output console. We know that it is a function because we can see that it has round method brackets. The print function has a parameter, a piece of additional information which it needs. This information is our message for output, which goes into the brackets. The quotation marks around our message tell the compiler that our message is a string of characters. Run the program and you should see your output in the console window. Here we can see Hello World, this is my first script. The last thing we'll learn about is the comment character. This is a hash symbol and the compiler will ignore everything after it on the same line. Try putting it in front of your second print statement and run your program again. Notice the line goes grey. When we run it, we only get our first statement, hello world. Programmers use comments to write notes, which explain what certain lines or sections of code do. That's the end of today's lesson. Here are some study drills that you should try to do. Make your script print another line. Make your script print only one of the lines. Put a comment character at the beginning of the line. Ask yourself, what will it do? Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again next time.